at night. How was the day earlier? How did it go? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, y- your average day, living the available dream, so to speak. The available dream. I like the way you put it. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. Very nice. Well, in this Very crazy nice. world. Yep. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Welcome everybody to the show. I'm here with Charlie Penn. He's a music composer. He's a music artist. He's a singer songwriter. Welcome, Charlie. Hello there. How's it How's it going? How are we doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, lovely, lovely England. Doing well. How's Are we looking in England today? Uh, yeah, well, uh, as there's an eight, an eight hour difference to you and I, um, mm. it's night for me and it's like midday for you guys. So yeah, my day right. has gone, <laughs> but it was a very nice, normal day. Very nice. Well, that's that's a good thing. And so, did you do some music today? Any music practice you got in today? Uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, working on my next project. Oh, is there anything we can talk about for the next project? Oh. How about current? Pro- let's get into it. Current projects, new projects. I, mean, I have uh, on Friday just gone. I have released a new single across space on all platforms, um, and I'm working on something quite big. Hopefully, for around early mid April, uh, okay. which will be quite fun. So across space is already available for us to find, and you have it something is. already coming up in April. Yeah. Nice. Are you a night owl? Do you stay up late at night, or are we keeping you up? Uh, no, no. I, I sort of... Um, I have to, because I go to a, a college, and my college starts quite early, and I have a lot of things to do. Um, therefore, I sort of don't really sleep <laughs> sometimes, but that's perfectly fine. I, I, my body's got used, gotten used to it, and I make sure to take care of myself. How many hours are you getting in these days? Uh, maybe maybe six, if I'm lucky. Which yeah, that's nice. still pretty good. That's still pretty. That's decent. Yeah. yeah. All right. What do you? It's what, it's what it is. Uh, I'm studying uh, songwriting in uh, a place called the Academy of Contemporary Music, all the way up in Guildford. The Academy of Contemporary Music up in Guildford. Yeah. All right. How is that? How, how do you like the? How do you like the academy? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's what I love to do, uh, minus all the stuff that I don't like, which is personally perfect for me. I. Uh, have loved music from a very young age and to, to to possibly pursue it as a career and also in my college work and possibly my possibly my future uni courses is a dream come true for me so walk me through your musical upbringing how did you become a singer songwriter when was when was the beginning of all of this uh well um i have a very musical background through my family you see uh uh, most of my grandparents could either play the piano or uh, are singing coaches, and my mum my and my dad are also singing coaches. Um, so they obviously sort of like accumulated on me over the years, and I slowly had to get good, so to speak, uh, in order to fit in. Uh, and so I mainly just, you know, <laughs> it, was a pre- very- it was a prerequisite just to get around in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like. Nice. You know, I, I, I got used to it. Um, I guess it's in the veins or whatever. Uh, but as I was growing up, it just sort of started with, you know, me and my dad, him playing the guitar, me babbling along. Uh, but as it, got, uh, as it got on, I took piano lessons and I also started to uh, become self-taught on the guitar the, uh, in 2016. And ever since then, I've been composing my own music. And it's only until recently, 2020... I have been releasing music. Very nice. So that's very awesome. So just to recap, you had a musical background growing mm-hmm. up. And so it was like a prerequisite just to, you had to be good at music just to get along with everyone. They were like, hey, are you practicing? Uh, well, it, it wasn't exactly like enforced or anything. Like if I wasn't going to be a musician, they weren't going to berate me for it. it. It was just more like uh, they strongly influenced and helped me. There was always something around good. to play music with, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always nice. grew up with a piano since the day I was born. Nice, Charlie, nice. And so, siblings, do you have siblings that also play music? Uh, I do. I have a brother. Uh, he's a brilliant musician, uh, except he's not taking it as a career. He's actually uh, uh, working in the film business as we speak. Uh, nice, yeah. nice. We want to give him a shout out. Oh, we can totally give him a shout out on Instagram. Uh, his name is Skippy Palmer. That is S K I P P Y P A L M E R. Very nice. Is, right. That is his uh, photography account. 
Skippy Palmer. Very nice. All right. Well, moving forward from there, that's very awesome to hear, Charlie. Your musical upbringing. You've got family that's in the business, whether it's in film, whether it's music. Let's talk about your new single. What was the process like writing that? Oh, yeah. Well, I actually wrote that um, several years ago because I previously uh, was in a band, a two-piece. Uh, we were called Stand Up Act because our motto was we took music as a joke. So, Stand Up right. Act. Okay. And so it was an overall sort of theatrical performance type of act? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was sort of like a... We sort of just had fun with music. That was kind of it. There wasn't a real plan around what we made. Uh, the aim was to just make stuff that we both enjoyed. Um, and this was one of the songs I created for us. Uh, but then, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we decided that it was not to be. And so we went our separate ways, um, respectively. And he's doing great at the moment. And I'm good. Well, I'm here. <laughs> And I originally created the... Sorry, I, I go off track quite a bit. Please do stop me. Um, Please continue but... as much as you'd like. I like to hear you. You're on something good, so it sounds good. We're recapping. You had the group, and then you guys just respectfully went your own ways, and now you've got your single. You wrote it years ago. That's pretty awesome. So yeah. So here you are. Yeah, here I am. Um, but yeah, I, I wrote it uh, several years ago, and it was essentially... Um, so how I explain, I should probably give a bit of context. How I write songs is I write them. There are two types of songs that I can write. There is the meaningful ones, the ones where I actually put thought into it, proper, like, you know, thoughtful, meaningful lyrics and such. Uh, and then there are other ones which I call, I've nicknamed filler songs. And they're just there to be songs for people to enjoy. And they can, the, the audience can think, oh, this means this to me, or this means that to me. It doesn't really matter as long as it brings us all together at the end of the day. But for me, it's sort of just there as a nice song that people can interpret their own way, and it doesn't really have a big influence on my life. Do you place less pressure on the songs you write on yourself? Do you sort of say, these are the fillers, we're going to move forward with these and focus more on X, uh, X tracks that we're, we're focusing on? Mm. Yeah, well, I, I put as much thought into each track, no matter what. Um, but it just sort of like, when it comes to lyrically, I, I'll, if I'll have a song and I'll have an awesome chord progression or I have a really cool melody, I'll think, okay, what's this song going to be about? If this is going to be about uh, something that I genuinely care about, I'm going to put more time into the lyrics. When the other one, uh, if it, for example, this one, which is a filler song, I'll just think, okay, well, it's here to be enjoyed. People don't really want care about listening to the lyrics they just want to hear something that's catchy and that they'll like so let me do that for them very nice and so you're still self-taught you're still continuing to pursue your musical craft and teachings you're still self-taught to this day yeah yeah uh, i keep on learning new sort of tunings and such i try my best to do whatever i can to enhance my progress very nice very nice charlie so you're, you're an active musician. You've never stopped. You've been in groups. You've gone your, your own way. You're pretty experienced when it comes to just the process of being a musician. So mm. now here you are with a single. You've got lots of songs you've already written. What's the, um, any ideas on how you'd like to move forward with this release in April? Is it going to be possibly an album release? Are we going to release multiple tracks? It sounds like you have lots of work that you're sort of just wondering what to do with. You have filler songs. You have lots of tracks. I, I think it'd be awesome to hear because it's good mm. work. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, but I'm afraid for April, I'm trying to keep it all kind of under wraps for, for the time being, just so, you know, to keep people entertained, of course, and keep people, uh, peep people? Keep people uh, interested. Uh, but for the time being, I can say that this is going to be the biggest thing that I've done when releasing music-wise, and I'm very excited to share it with everybody. Well, that's exciting because they always say, you know, you're only as good as your last performance, right? And so it sounds like with you, you're sticking true to that. You're saying this next one is going to be the biggest one, the best one, and, and stay tuned. I'm not going to say much more besides stay tuned. Exactly. Keep them waiting. Keep them waiting. What's the genre? Um, for this big thing, you see, okay. I, uh, when I create music, I, my aim is to... Because this may not be the start. This is the start of my career, but this may not be how I progress, if you understand. For example, Charlie Penn is a persona. This is a character that I've created. 
and this is how I'm going to make my music. I'm going to try everything I can. I'm just not just going to make one genre. I'm going to branch out, try and do as much th as many things as I can. But so as I'm doing that, I'm making variants and such. I'm also trying to figure out what's best, uh, what's best for me. And so I can think eventually in a few years, I'll be like, okay, I can do this genre really well. I'm going to focus on that. And so this next big thing in April is going to be a part of that where I will be experimenting essentially. So, so I can't you, really you allow pick yourself a certain to genre. I understand. You're still allowing yourself the musical freedom to go in whatever direction you please, because at the end of the day, this is one act, but you're not limited to anything. You're still allowing that freedom to let it go where it's going to go. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, that's really exciting because I think that allows you the freedom to discover new things. And that's what we want to hear. New things. A lot of the music uh, that sort of came out years ago and throughout time, it sort of just is a watered down version of what we knew to love time and time ago. So it's exciting to hear that you're experimenting with different sounds and you don't limit yourself in any way. That's exciting, Charlie. So walk me through your daily process. Are you practicing on a daily basis? You're a, you're a student in university, so I imagine it's hard to really get in that time that you need to work towards your craft, but you look like a disciplined person. How do you get stuff done? Uh, well, I usually sort of do my own thing, and I'm uh, quite focused. I, my, my sort of uh, logical process would be that I sort of just wait until something comes, you know? You can't really uh, say, okay, I'm going to do something now, I'm going to write this now. You've got to sort of just let it happen. Uh, for example, if you just suddenly get uh, a melody in your head at 2 a.m. in the morning, you got to wake up, got to get your phone, got to record that. But, oh, so you, 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 you are at this point where you record things when inspiration spikes. Some oh, people, yeah. Very nice, very nice. And so how about with regards to recording your material? Do you record it in hmm. the studio? Do you record it from the bedroom? Do you have all the equipment yourself to produce your work? Are you a one-man army? I am a one-man army. Quite On the usual, I am a one-man army. Perfect way of saying it. Because I... Personally, I, I, I don't have... <laughs> well, I don't have a job at the moment. I'm really trying to get stuff, but it's quite difficult because of uh, the old COVID. Um, but... Because of that, uh, I haven't got a large income of money. Therefore, I've just got to sort of work with what you have. Work with what I've had, what I've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, well, that's a lot of us, right? A lot of us have to get creative with what we have. Necessity is the mother of our creation. Well, I'm really excited, Charlie. I could keep asking you more things. You know, who do you perform with normally? Is it a, even though you're a one man army, do you do lots of collaborations? Since having moved forward with this group that you were previously with, have you done lots of collaborations? Have you worked on your craft and just sort of, you know, kept it with yourself? Uh, well, what I've been doing, I, I obviously I'm a solo artist, and therefore I, I sort that it, for me it's better in a way because I can let my creativity flow to its full potential. I suppose as much as I do appreciate the good old bit of criticism. Uh, but I do enjoy working with other people quite a lot because it makes me know more about myself as a songwriter. Uh, for example, if you won't mind, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, one band in particular called Cut Flowers, which is C-U-T-F-L-O-W-E-R-S, Cut Flowers. They are a brilliant sort of like indie alternative band, three piece. I think they've got something special. Um, and I enjoy working with them. In fact, they may or may not be involved in the big thing in April. That's, that's all I'm going to say there. But they are right. a brilliant band, and I love them to pieces. Cut flowers. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, that's really exciting to hear, and we're looking forward to it. Now, can we talk a little bit about the persona act of Charlie Penn? How about you, the performer, the musician? That's really exciting to think that there's a persona out there and there isn't you know there's something actively out there but at the same time you say you know it's not the only thing we're going to see from you so is it possible we'll see many different personas is it possible that you might how does that look well the persona thing i sort of just created because then i as much as i enjoy being myself and like if i were to perform on a stage i'd probably most likely be myself rather than a persona uh but i'm sort of just playing with the whole charlie penn persona at the moment uh because I want to see where it can go, where I can take it, what I can do with this new person that I've just created out of thin air, and I can see what they are. Um, 
So it allows you the freedom to to separate yourself from the crowd in many ways, and just from maybe even the rejection that we receive from the work. Because at the end of the day, you create the work and you put it out there for other people to receive. And we have to sort of separate ourselves moving forward from there, because you know people can always just take things in whatever direction they please. But I think with, with you, you sort of have a good good way to move forward with that and say, hey, this is you know. This is my my performance at, with regards to a performance. It can always use work and it can always be bettered. And so it's easier to do that than us musicians who can maybe be a little more, what's the word we can use, fragile when it comes to, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the feedback we receive. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that the persona is something that I would hide behind if I took, if I was giving criticism. But it's sort of like, I guess, like we mentioned earlier, how I want to uh, experiment with certain things. This persona is for me to see what I can do, um, you know, so I can see what works, what doesn't. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. If it does work, then the next person might just carry that on, if there is one. It's all Very up in the nice. air at the moment. Very nice. Okay. Now, with regards to England, are you going to stay in England? Do you wish to remain in England? Oh, well, the plan is probably to stay in England for, for quite a while, but obviously if I ever get somewhat of a fan base, I would love to travel the world and such, but at this very moment in time, I'm certainly intending on staying here in good old, good old Great Britain. All right. Well, the, the good gift that we have today is that we have social media and we can present our work worldwide uh, to an mm -hmm. audience that will receive it. So you don't really have to travel too far and you can stay wherever you please. Mm. How do you yeah, feel about always... being an, how do you feel about being an artist and being able to put your work out through social media? I think it's, I think it's brilliant. Uh, as much as uh, I, I enjoy social media but I don't use it that much. Um, I think for artists this is a brilliant age because we can show our music to whoever we whoever finds it and whoever enjoys it and listens to it we can just spread the love man and that's that's what it's all about at the end of the day we've got to look out for each other you know we may not be like neighbors per se but at the end of the day we're all friends we're all the same race we're all the human race we should look out for each other and the only way i can do that at the moment to everybody else i can't reach is through my music well said, Charlie. Well said. All right, you guys. So coming up after our commercial break, we're going to talk with Charlie Pence and more about his future projects and much more. All right, everyone, so we're back with Charlie Penn. He's got a new song, Across Space. He's an active musician in England, and he's always working. Charlie, tell me about how much you're working on your music and just always staying busy. Mm. Well, um, due to the fact that I'm also in a, uh, in a music college, obviously, I've got to focus on that because that is the main priority. You know, I've got to get my education sorted before I actually fully pursue this. But for the time being, uh, when I work on music, I've got to just... I'm sometimes a bit of a procrastinator, which isn't the best thing when it comes to music because you know you sort of think I'll do that later and then you don't do it sometimes. Uh, so how I get through things is I just get myself a mug of coffee, get myself something to snack on, just sit down at the computer with my guitar and just do something. Do something that comes to my head or something that I've been working on that I've recorded earlier or something. Maybe Shut you could watch, watch a movie and have the guitar next to you. They say Slash from Guns N' Roses can never be found without his guitar. Mm, yeah. But no, yeah. yeah, I always chill with my guitar. It's, it's usually within 10 feet. <laughs> well, and you're also in a music university and you're, you're studying music always. So it's also not to say you're always, you're in it fully. You're fully embodied mm. in music. So it's not like it ever leaves you. No, no, it definitely doesn't. Um... Uh, due to the fact, of course, that I'm doing online stuff now because I don't get to go in because of COVID. Um, due to that fact, I sort of have to do it online, uh, which isn't the best thing, especially for a creative person. You know, you want to get that social interaction. Get, you know, I can actually lean over and show you what this call is, uh, but on this, I can't do that. I've got a, I'm slightly limited. 
But apart from that, I'm thoroughly enjoying my college uh, because of the fact that it's um, just pretty amazing in general. Just for my How long were you personally. studying in your school before the COVID pandemic hit? How long were you at hmm. the university prior to this? Had you uh, just begun? This, Had you... this is my first year. So I got to be on campus um, for about two months. And then Ooh, another lockdown hit. Months. Oh man, yeah. that's a that's a bummer. Yeah, it really sucks. But then you know, because I was I was previously in school, obviously, and then at the end of my last year at school, my uh, well, COVID hit, and therefore I had to get sent home. And then finally, so you were staying like was... there. You were dorming there. You were in the full experience. You were having breakfast. Oh no, no, no! no. I, I wasn't. I wasn't dorming there. No, no. I was going to and from and such. And then um, from my school, I got sent back home, and that's fine. And then I get to go to college, and I was like, oh yes, this is going to be really. This is really fun. COVID look like, looks like it's clearing up, and this was like last year before December, so clearly that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Yeah, so I got two months of actually feeling the full experience or close enough to it. And then I've been online ever since, since like before Christmas. Now, are you still paying the same tuition as if you were to be at the school in person? Uh, yes, we are. Well, I, well, okay. So college over here is sort of like your last years of high school, I think. And so what you call, what you call college is our university. Right. And so we, uh, college over here, we don't have to pay, we, but we have to pay to get there and pay for certain things. Say we want to rent out a studio or something that's in the facility. We, we pay for that and such. Um, but due to the fact that we can't go in, I don't have to pay any train fares. I don't have to pay anything due to the facility as it's all online. I am perfectly fine <laughs> with payments. Very nice. And so with regards to the quarantine, how, how did that impact you? Were you somebody who was outdoors a lot, doing a lot of things? Or were you somebody who was already sort of in his bedroom and staying active with his studies mm. and just it wasn't too big of an impact? Mm. Well, uh, something I like about myself, uh, <laughs> making me sound like a bit of a narcissist, that's not what I meant. Uh, but um, something that I, I quite like about my personality is the fact that I'm not just quite extroverted, I can be introverted. It's quite an easy switch for me. And so I enjoyed going outdoors. I enjoyed doing everything with my friends and such. But I also enjoyed my time, you know, my alone time. And as much as it sucks that I can't go and be social now, it hasn't affected me that much because I just have been introverted for like the last however long we've been doing this. Interesting. Well, so you're able to, you're very adaptable, it sounds like. Yeah, that's, well, a, that's, that's a perfect word. It's a very desirable personality trait, so I don't think it sounds narcissistic to identify with this trait. I think it's a valuable trait. You know, to be adaptable is is something we all want to be. You you have to be able to adapt to your environment, and it sounds like you were able to do that. Yeah, yeah, quite easily, which is quite nice. Very nice. Well, good stuff, Charlie. Well, I really appreciate you for being on the show, Charlie. Maybe we can get you on again in the future. You say in April you have something coming up, so we can follow up, and maybe you can do something like a live performance maybe for us. That'd be really awesome to see. Yeah, I would love to. C could we maybe see your setup that you have right now? What are you working with? Are you nearby something we could check out? Yeah, um, yeah I am. Okay, uh, one second. Let me just go get that. <laughs> Where are you currently located, Charlie, exactly in England? Uh, Portsmouth. Portsmouth, all right. All right, you guys, so Charlie Penn coming out of Portsmouth, England. This is a song called Song for a Guilty Sadist by a British duo called Crywank. <laughs> Makes me feel like a weak man Who thinks that he is strong Must I play the chauvinist To be the man you want Sweaty fingers pushed down your throat You say you like it rough But it's hard for me to do this out of love 
for my own submissive pleasure I must do it just as you wish But say your board won't dominating Like a weak man who thinks that he is strong, must I play the chauvinist to be the man you want? Sweat your fingers, push down on your throat, you say you like it rough, but it's hard for me to do this out of love. From my own submissive pleasure, I must do just as you wish. You say you slap your face too lightly when you tell me to make fist. Kiss me softly, do not bite. Let's explore like naughty kids. You say you're bored, I'm dominating, but I just stare and flinch. Thoughts into your bedroom Is it a condescending to be so scared I might hurt you? Oh, how rude of me to invite my thoughts into your bedroom Is it condescending to be so scared I might hurt you? All right, Johnny, well, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate everything you did for us, the live performance, and just offering your words and your time. Ah, oh, well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a great experience. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. All right. And like I said, we're going to get you on again in the future and follow up with you because you're really awesome. You're a great musician, and I'm glad people were able to see that because it was really good stuff, man. I think, I think that was awesome. Sounds awesome. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, I've seen a lot of your stuff, and I'm really liking the podcasts. Um, so thank you very much for having me on. All right, Charlie, have a great night. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll yeah. follow up. Have a good day, man. All right, you too.